If you've been around my channel for any amount of time, you'll probably know about Radius, my mobile game project. Back when I published the video, I figured, okay, I'll put it out, see how it does, and then work on it over the course of the next couple weeks, and publish it maybe in a month's time. Uh, but that was nine months ago. <laughs> Yes, the day has finally come for me to post a part two to any project on my channel. If you have no idea what's going on, that means you're new here. So hi, subscribe now. But with that said, I can feel my watch time dropping by the second. So let's jump right back in where we left off after the first episode oh so long ago. We had the main game mechanic already established. A cube rolling around on a platform with bombs falling and trying to knock him off. All the while, the platform was gradually shrinking. We also had a menu, but as I mentioned in the last episode, it didn't work. So that was first things first, so I could technically call this a game. So I slapped together a quick scene with a couple of buttons to take you from point A to point B, fiddled around with Unity's level manager because I have no idea how it works, and eventually got so if you hit button, you go into game. Now I really wanted to start working on customization because that's something I've never done before and it's probably also one of the most enjoyable parts to do, to come up with new skins, set prices, stuff like that. It's fun, it's creative. But unfortunately, I realized I should probably make the game work first. More specifically, I want this to kind of conjure up a bullet hell type feel. It's a panic. It starts easy, but gets more difficult as time goes on, but also with a greater reward as time goes on. So to do that was pretty simple. Every time a bomb spawns, the cooldown for another bomb spawning drops by 0.1 seconds until it reaches a threshold around one and a half seconds and then it'll hold there. And typically at that time the platform is very small too, so it goes from being easy to panicky and fighting for your life in the final bits, which is what I'm going for. It was finally time to start working on customization. Now, for customization, you need a currency, something to purchase customization options with, some way to show progression. And I was gonna have this complicated system with coins falling from the sky on the platform and you pick those up, and I might still add that, but for now, I just made it so that you get a coin every time a bomb lands. From there, I set up a shop where you could purchase and equip different skins for your cube, and might I add, a cube seems so simple at first, but it is very hard to think of things that you can, you know, turn a cube into to make it look good and ha make people want to keep playing your game and maybe watch ads to purchase. But I got a couple good contenders in there, but at the moment, it doesn't do anything. This scene is completely separated from the game scene, there's no communication and you can't actually do something. And this led me to the two month headache that I've been dealing with known as the level manager. You see, the level manager is the name for the script that I wrote to keep track of the player's coins, its current skin, the stats and all its coins, everything that the player needs for customization and progression is kept track of on this level manager. And when you want to save progress in a game, the simplest solution that I definitely wrote myself and did not steal from a Bracky's video is you send this data to another script, the script takes it, converts it to binary, and saves it to your computer. Sounds simple, is not. And typically I would try to walk you through the code, but I barely even understand that, so instead, let's do this. So this is a representation of the player's script with his stats. It's going through the game, it's collecting data, and eventually it finishes, and the level manager script comes over and asks him for all of his new fresh data. Upon the player script doing any action, like going to the menu or going to the shop, the level manager will save the game with all of that data it's collecting from the player and the data it has stored in itself, giving that data to the system to keep track of. Whenever a new game starts, it retrieves that data from the system, plugs it into the game, and it continues working. Now, whenever the shop is accessed and customization things are bought, the shop manager comes over and asks for the data that the level manager just collected. Fortunately, since he saves each time that he goes to the shop, it can pull that data right back and give it off to the shopkeeper. The shopkeeper then compiles his shop based on what you do and do not own and assigns the prices accordingly. 
and then when he wants to make a purchase, he checks with the level manager to see if he has enough money. The level manager is keeping track of a million different things, but he does it with a smile on his face because he knows if he messes up for even a second, I will replace him with a version of himself that does his job better without hesitation. The level manager makes the according purchases, saves the game again, and then lets the player make an option like watching an ad for more coins, going back to the game, or going to the main menu. I hope you enjoyed that. So with that out of the way, the last big hurdle I wanted to cover was ads, because ads are a kind of important part of mobile games. And as I mentioned, I like money. Now on that note, mobile games get kind of a bad rap because so often they turn into what we call ad farms. There's just ad after ad after ad that's forced on you, and even if you delete the app right away, the publisher still got like 5-10 ad watches out of you, so they're making money. But even though I like money and I would love if I started earning money off of this, I'm not doing this for the money. And so I've made it so that the only time you will ever see an ad in this game is if you click on the button to watch an ad and it will give you coins for your troubles. I know, I know, thank you, thank you really. But after implementing ads, there were still some bug fixes that I wanted to take care of before I could really call it a game. So I took another week to give it some polish, slap together an about page and a settings page where you can reset your progress. I don't know why you would ever want to reset your progress, but it felt like something I should have. And there's one final, you know, little insignificant bit of polish. Uh, the game has no sound whatsoever. <laughs> and if you've played a game before, you might know that they, well, they, um, they typically have sounds. But now if you've been paying attention, you'll know what we do when we don't have something, and that is... Steal it from other people on the internet, right. I, when I say steal, I mean do royalty free stuff, but it's funnier when I say steal. I feel like a big thing that's missing is background music, but unfortunately I just cannot think of anything to put in the background and there's tons of royalty free stuff online, but I wouldn't feel right using something that wasn't created for it. But at this point, the game is finished and there's only one thing left to do, actually getting it to you, to the consumer. And I would love to publish it on iOS and Android, but unfortunately, Apple makes it exceedingly difficult to get anything published, and it costs $100, which seems a little excessive, Apple. I know that's kind of your thing, but like, come on, I'm trying to put something on your store that earns you money. Google, on the other hand, is much easier. It's a $25 fee, and all you have to do is submit some paperwork and all that and upload it. And, um, I assume they're going to clear it for release. I actually haven't heard back to them because it's the weekend and tomorrow's MLK Day. Uh, so I'm not going to hear back probably until Tuesday, which is a little terrifying. I do not know what they've done with my $25, and frankly, Google, I am angry. But provided it all goes well, there should be a link in the description that takes you to the Google Play Store. But if you have an Android or anything that runs Android, I would recommend you pick it up. You support me, and it's a good time waster. So editing George here, it took an entire week, but it is finally approved for production, which I believe is the final stage. It um I don't know if you can don't know if you can see that, but it is finally greenlit. <laughs> the apps typically take about three days to get approved. Mine took a week. I'm not entirely sure why. But yeah, this means there is a link in the description for you to pick it up. It's free. And it helps me out. So, yeah, cool.